Pastor Tony here hanging out with you guys for Hope Kids at Home. All month long we've been talking about integrity and we've been talking about how integrity is kind of like wearing a costume, right? Especially a costume with a mask and we like to pretend to be someone that we're not. Now someone that we really like to dress up as and we like to be are superheroes because superheroes have integrity. And remember, integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. We love superheroes. We love superheroes like Spider-Man, Superman, um, Captain America, Iron Man, even Mr. Incredible. We love superheroes because they fight for us. They fight for people. They fight for the common good. They stand up for what is right. They do what is right. And whenever something is in distress, when there's a villain or someone bad, they are looked to as someone who can defeat that, to bring peace and to bring normalcy into the world, especially when it goes through something that is bad. Superheroes are ultimately truthful. They live a life of integrity. But we don't always like to be heroes at times, do we? I know some of you like to play the opposite person, the villain. You like to be the villain in the story. You like to be the one that causes chaos and destruction and fight against the evil. But that's the thing about pretending is that you can stop being the bad guy. You can stop being the villain at a certain point. You can take off that costume or flip up that mask and you get to go back to your normal self. But what we're gonna see in today's story is that when we live a life that looks more like the bad guy than the good guy, when we do things like cheat or lie or steal, when we don't live a life of integrity, it's a lot harder to take off that mask. It's a lot harder to step behind that and say that we're pretending. So here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to hang out with my friends from the so-and-so show, and I'll see you guys when the video is done. Would you like to go to the movies later? Would I? Would I? Yes, yes, yes. Do you want to go to the movies later or not? Huh? <laughs> hey, who's this? Oh, oh, what does it look like? It's Pinocchio. Uh, hey, I'm trying to change my image, remember? Call me Jerry. Oh, sorry, I forgot. So, 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 Jerry, what's it like being a real boy? I'm still a puppet. That cricket didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> Did you try wishing upon a star? Yeah, and I ended up with you. Whoop de doo! Whoop de doo! <laughs> well, what do you think? I think uh, I think it's it's it's, uh, it's great. It's really great. <laughs> Thanks. I've been working with him for months. C could you see my mouth moving? Your mouth? Yeah. No. I, I mean, I had. I had no idea that was you making the voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we make a pretty good team, don't we? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, we've been thinking about going out on tour together. Now, be honest with me. Do you think, uh, you think audiences would like us? A tour? Mm -hmm. A comedy tour? Mm -hmm. Well, I... Uh, I... Uh, you know, I think that would be a, a super idea. I think it would be a big hit. This may be the best idea you've ever had. Uh, Brandon, is, is your nose growing? Absolutely not.
Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we are so glad you decided to join us today. And I am doubly glad. Oh, yeah? And why are you so glad, glad? Because of today's guest. Oh, that's right. That should be a lot of fun. It should be doubly fun. Please welcome all the way from Hollywood, someone who knows stuff. Oh, John. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Hey! Hey! How's it going? So good. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse Brandon. He's really excited that you're on the show today. Doubly excited. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. My name is Oakley, and I'm a special effects makeup artist for the movies! Yes, yes, yes! Okay, special effects makeups. Now, that's someone who does more than just covering up some pimples and bad skin and stuff, right? Right, right. They've got other makeup artists to do that. But if you want someone to make you look older or to give you like a nasty cut or a bruise or something, call me. Yeah, but your specialty is... Oh, my specialty is making people into monsters! monsters! Oh, so you make what? Monster masks? <sighs> I mean, sometimes. Mm. Uh, more often, though, it's makeup and latex and glue. It's important not to cover the actor's face entirely because you have to see their mouth move and their facial expressions. Oh, so that because that way uh, you want their performance to shine through the makeup, right? Exactly. I want to be a monster. I think uh, Brandon would like you to make him up today. I do, I do, I do, I do. Well, I can't do it myself, of course, because I'm on set. But did you get the package I sent? Yeah. Got it. You are going to turn yourself into one of the scariest, the smartest, most deadly creatures ever. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm going to talk you through it. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, let's get started with the black eyeliner pencil. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, got it. Makeup time lapse! Wow, Brandon, great effort. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, let me see, let me see. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, there you go. <sighs> <sighs> you look amazing. I look like an owl. An owl's not a monster. Okay, but owls are smart. They can be scary and deadly too. Just ask mice and bunny rabbits. I look like an owl. Well, thanks Oakley for showing us what you do. It really is. Incredible. You bet. Thanks for having me. Are you gonna be all right? <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, I, whoo, <laughs> I mean, what's going on? I'm an owl. Yeah, you are, and you look great. And I'd trust you, and I would come to you for advice. And you know it. Move on. Will do. How about a story from the book of 2 Kings starring the one and only so-and-so show players? Perfect. Perfect. This story is about a man named Gehazi who was a servant to Elisha, a prophet of God. Gehazi did something that wasn't very honest. Who? Me? <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute. Oh. First, let's talk about Naaman. Naaman was an army commander. That's right. I'm Naaman. I'm the man in charge. When I say jump, people say how high. hoo he was a brave soldier who won many battles, but he had a skin disease. 
Ah, go away, spots. Go away. Ah, you're still there. Ah. A servant in Naaman's house spoke of a prophet in Samaria who could heal Naaman's disease. So after getting permission from his king, Naaman went to see Elisha. Whoa! Off-screen caravan of horses and chariots. Oh! Oh, wow, wow. Elisha? Uh, me? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, he is inside, but he has sent me out here to give you a message. He says to go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and then your skin will be healed. Seriously? Uh, yes, yes. He, he says to go and wash yourself seven times. Yeah. Got it, I got it, I got it. Seven times, right. yeah. Mm. Well. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Giddy up, man. Whoa, whoa. Mm. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself in the water seven times. And when he came out, his skin was clean. So he returned to Elisha. Whoa! <laughs> Elisha? Now I know your God is the one true God. <laughs> Please accept a gift from me. I have 750 pounds of silver. I have 150 pounds of gold. And I have 10 sets of fine clothing, all upon my chariot that I would love to have someone come and deliver to you as, as I, as I. I serve the Lord. As sure as he is alive, I will not accept a gift. Please, you, you must accept a gift. I will not. Please? No. Oh. <gasps> Pretty please. Nope. But no matter how much Naaman begged, Elijah refused to take a gift. So Naaman started on his way. Gehazi wasn't too happy about the whole thing. My master has been a little too easy on Naaman. He should have at least accepted a gift. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go after Naaman and ask him to give me a gift or something. As sure as the Lord is alive. <laughs> so Gehazi ran and caught up with Naaman. Way up! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh, is everything all right? Oh, it's... <sighs> oh. <sighs> totally. Yes. <clears throat> now, <laughs> if do, do do you do you remember how my master said that he he didn't need any kind of gifts or, or anything? I do. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, uh, turns out he's changed his mind. Yes, yes, we've had a, a visitor drop by who's a little short on gold and silver and stuff. Oh, of course. So, yeah, how much do you want? How much? How much? <laughs> I didn't even think about how about 75 pounds of silver and two sets of clothing? Well, I insist you take twice as much silver. <laughs> you do know best, yes. <laughs> Oh dear. Wow. Excellent. Oh, thank you. Oh my goodness. Yes, well, that's quite a lot. Thank you mm. very much for your kindness. Uh, mm. Yes. Be on your way. Oh yes, I will be on my way. When Gehazi got back to Elisha's house, he put the gifts away, someplace safe. But before he could truly celebrate what he'd done, he ran into Elisha. <laughs> Silver is so heavy. <laughs> oh, look at it all. It's so, <clears throat> Elijah? Where have you been? Me? Little old moi. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Gehazi, I know you went back to Naaman. My spirit was with you the whole time. Why couldn't you just be honest? Oh, I have always been honest. Now... 
You're going to have the same skin disease as Naaman. No. No. No, 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 no. The end. Well, let's hear it for the so and so show players. What'd you think, fellas? Cool story, right? I mean, absolutely. Very funny. I, you know, it's hard to trust people once they've told a lie like that. I know I'd have a hard time trusting Kazi. Yeah, he was just foul. All right, all right. See you next time, Kellen. I guess all good things have to come to an end. Bye. Owl good things. No more owl jokes, okay? I'll try. Hmm. I can't even think of what comes next in the show. Oh, well, I guess we'll just have to wing it. <laughs> okay, now I'll try. I'll try. Reveal I'll try. the question. Why is it important for people to trust you? That's a good question. What do you think, John? Well, because no one likes to hang out with people who don't tell the truth. Stop it. What did I say? Who? All right. I know I'm telling you the truth. Oh, boy. We'll see you guys next week. Hey, Brandon, how many licks does it take to get to the center of this lollipop? <laughs> oh, let me see. One. Two. Two. Is it good? Hmm? No, no. <laughs> so Elisha's servant Gehazi told a lot of lies, didn't he? Gehazi lied to himself and said that he needed more stuff than what he actually needed. He lied to Naaman to get all that stuff that he lied to himself about. And then when it came to Elisha, he lied about everything. So going back to our illustration beforehand with good guys and bad guys, Gehazi wasn't necessarily a villain. He wasn't someone who's causing all this destruction. But at the same time, would Gehazi be someone that you would trust? But the truth is, is we all have people in our lives who have acted like Gehazi, or even we have acted like Gehazi towards other people in our life as well. Like for example, has someone said that they would keep a secret? They begged you to tell you a secret and then you trusted them to keep it all of themselves. And next thing you know, that secret was told to other people. Could you trust them next time around with a secret? Or what, have you had someone tell you that they were gonna do something, but they didn't end up doing it? Essentially, they gave you your word and they didn't do anything with it. Are you more likely to trust them next time around? It's harder to trust people after they let you down, right? Well, just like how we are less likely to trust others who hurt us because of that, the truth is, is when we choose to lie or when we choose to do something or not do something that we say that we're going to do, we end up being in that same position where people are less likely to trust us because of what we say and what we do. And at the end of it, it makes us come across as the bad guy, the one that no one can trust. And that leads me to the main point I want you guys to know for today. It's that when you're not truthful, you lose trust. I think that's something we all know. And it goes along with respect. I always say this, in order to get respect, you have to give respect. If you want people to respect you, you have to show it yourself. Well, the same thing is true of trust, is people are going to trust you if you show up that you are truthful each time. With the words that you say and the actions that you do, that is going to tell others whether or not you are truthful or whether or not you, you are. So being truthful is helpful in how our friendships are with others. 
how our relations are with our parents, with our teachers, with people of authority, of respect. But being truthful and practicing trust goes way beyond just our relationships here. It goes beyond more than just how your friends see you or how your relationship with your parents are. It actually is rooted and tied into our relationship with God. And here's why being truthful is important for me. While being someone of integrity is important because, think about this, my most important thing in this world, the most important thing that you can do as a Jesus follower is to love God and to love others, right? The two most important commands that God has given us, that Jesus says that this is the utmost priority more than anything in this world, to love God, to love people. Well, here's where integrity comes in, is that if I'm a person that doesn't live in a, in a life of integrity, that I don't do what I'm going to do, or I say things that are not truthful, when I'm telling others or living, a, when I'm trying to tell others or live a life that points to Jesus, that points to the ultimate truth that God is, 100% perfect, that he is good, that he loves you, that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. All those statements are true. And if I don't live a life that is truthful, people aren't going to not only listen to me, they're not gonna believe the truth that comes through Jesus. You see, a very important thing is to tell others and to model life about who Jesus is. And if my life doesn't reflect Jesus, no one's going to believe that Jesus loves them, that Jesus respects them, that Jesus honors them, that Jesus came and died and, and, and lived for them. You see, our life is tied into that. So it's more than just how it affects our relationships here and our friendships it ultimately is tied into our relationship with God too. Does this mean you're going to stop lying and stop saying you're gonna do things when you're not? No, because we all sin and we're all gonna to continue to sin. But next time you're in a situation where you're tempted to lie or you're tempted to not be honest or where you're tempted to do or not do something when you say you are, when you said you were going to, I want you to think about your relationship with God. And you can ask yourself, will this impact my opportunity to share Jesus with this person if I'm not being truthful, if I'm not living a life of integrity, if I'm not being honest, will this stop me from being able to share the good news of Jesus with someone else? And that's why integrity is so important. Ultimately, because it comes back to Jesus. Remember, Jesus loves you so much that he came into this world, lived a sinless life, lived perfectly, so that way we have a model, we have an example for our life to live after, ultimately dying on the cross for the punishment, the consequence of our sin. Jesus didn't have to do it, he didn't earn it, but he chose to take on your sin and your punishment of sin, so that way when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, when you name him the boss of your life, you're able to enter into a relationship with God again, and now God doesn't see you as someone who's far off from him, but he now calls you a brother and sister. He calls you a son and daughter, and then you have brothers and sisters with other believers, that you have blessings that are made in Jesus. It's incredible. But also with our example, with what we do and what we say, impacts how others see Jesus in and through us as well. So as you go through this week, my challenge is, is to live with integrity, to not lose trust with others, to build that trust up, to do what you're gonna say you're gonna do, to say the things that are truthful, and live a life of integrity. It's hard, you're not gonna get it right 100% of the time, but it's something to remember as we try and show others who Jesus is. Well, Hope Kids, I'm praying that you guys have an awesome week, an awesome week of 
online school for most of you. Some of you are back in school. Um, we are praying that you guys have an awesome, awesome time. And remember, if you're looking for a time of hangout and community and small groups and games, come join us at Avelino Park from 1.30 to 3 on Sunday. We are going to be diving in, talking more about these truths here as far as when we aren't truthful, we lose trust. And we're going to explore this um, story more with Elisha and Naaman. So uh, make sure you guys join us on Sunday. We'll see you guys at Park and if not, we'll see you next week for Hope Kids at Home.